Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorius. So this is going to be genuinely a relatively short and simple video talking about the fascinating topic of ramrods, but more specifically captive ramrods. Now the reason that I'm quickly churning out this video now is that a discussion on uh, Facebook, uh, a friend of mine asked me what a particular thing was on a pistol, which we're going to look at in a moment, and I was like, oh well that's the hinge for a captive ramrod. And it occurred to me that lots of you out there might not know what a captive ramrod is, some of you might not even know what a ramrod is. So very, very briefly, here we've got um, an East India Company musket um, from the 1840s probably, maybe about 1850, Type F, uh, East India Company musket. Uh, nice uh, big thing, used um, very uh, widespread use in the Indian Mutiny and of course the campaigns um, earlier than that in the 1850s as well. Now, um, when you load one of these, most of you will know this from watching... Um, I guess movies like uh, The Patriot or watching uh, Sharp or whatever, maybe even seeing a local reenactment. Uh, this one's a bit stiff, there you go. One of the important elements to loading it is a ramrod. Um, so obviously you put your the contents of the cartridge down there, which at this time usually is contained in a paper um, parcel essentially, um, that you, you bite the end off, uh, pour the powder down, and then you've got the um, paper and the, the ball um, that you then ram down it, that will stick down the end of it, and you need to ram the whole lot down and seat it firmly at the base of the um, chamber down here, at the base of the barrel on the inside, so that obviously when you uh, ignite it via the, uh, in this case, percussion lock. Obviously, if it was a flint lock, then it would be with a flint, but uh, with a percussion cap on there, you ignite it so that the uh, powder obviously explodes here and pushes the ball out of the um, end of the muzzle at high velocity and um, hits the opponent, hopefully. Um, but the important thing that you need to be able to load one of these guns is a ramrod, okay? And if you don't have a ramrod, you're kind of in trouble. Um, which is, you know, I guess ramrods don't get the, uh, the kind of credit and the kudos that they're due. Uh, but this little rod of metal, and obviously some of them are wood on the earlier ones, they tend to be made of wood, is very, very vital to the operating of this gun. Could you operate it without a ramrod if this somehow fell out or got lost or broken or bent or something? Um, possibly, just about. You could maybe makeshift quickly get another stick, borrow someone else's ramrod, something like that. Um, you could possibly, I don't know, you could use any kind of long thin object, but fundamentally if you're on the march or you're in a skirmish or something and you lose your ramrod, you're in quite a lot of trouble. Um, I don't really know that you could effectively load a gun without the ramrod, but anyway, so there we go. A ramrod, very, very important element to uh, any of the firearms of this period. Oh, it's very stiff, I need to give that a clean. Right. Um, so, obviously, this translates over to pistols. You've seen this pistol before, I've used it in quite a lot of my videos. These have ramrods, they are correspondingly smaller, okay, but they do exactly the same thing um, and you use them in the same way. Now, initially, um, ramrods, when they came along, were fitted pretty much just like on the musket there, they're fitted in the front of the pistol or musket or rifle or whatever. Um, and they're removable. Now the problem is they can be lost and dropped as I mentioned. This is particularly a problem um, with pistols um, because pistols are often worn point down. They're often worn stu stuck in a sash or a belt or sometimes they have a hook on the back which we'll see in a minute. So they actually hook onto the belt and because they're worn point down they have the risk of this falling out is much much more likely than with a musket which is usually carried point up or muzzle up rather. Um, I'm too used to talking about swords. Um, so number one pistols are more likely to lose their ramrod. That's the first thing. The second thing is that on horseback you're also more likely to lose a ramrod because obviously you're riding on a horse, you're jiggling around your firearm might be point up, might be point down, but either way, it could be lost. Um, equally, when you're reloading on horseback, you're sitting on a horse. If you're reloading, let's say I'm reloading this on foot, and I go, oh, I dropped my ramrod, I can easily just bend down and pick up my ramrod. If you're sitting on a horse, especially if you're skirmishing, you're in combat, you don't want to have to get off your horse to pick up your ramrod and then get back on your horse and then proceed reloading again. Um, you want to be able to sit on your horse and not 
run the risk of losing your ramrod. So number one, losing the ramrod. Secondly, dropping the ramrod and being able to recover it quickly. For that reason, they invented something known as the captive ramrod, which is shown on this cute little belt pistol. So as mentioned, you'll see that this um, pistol has a clip there, a sprung steel clip that actually clips onto your belt. This is a percussion muzzle loading um, belt pistol from around 1840-1850 by Tatham, or Tatham, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, of London. Quite a well-known pistol, uh, firearm maker. Um, and you'll notice that the ramrod sits underneath here. The end of it is kept in a tube here. And at the end here, we've got a little hinge-like mechanism. And that is exactly what it is. Okay, so sorry, just make it focus on the pistol again. There we go. So what happens is when you want to load this pistol, you pull that ramrod and it is captive on there. Can you see how that's attached really nicely? And that slides up here and it enables you to twizzle the thing round and load like that. Um, and then pull it out again and stick it back in here. And at no point do you run, oh, at no point, sorry, I've done that a bit wrong. There we go. At no point do you run any risk of losing that ramrod. Now this uh, captive ramrod system was used not just on pistols but it was also used on cavalry carbines which are essentially short muskets. So clearly if you're a mounted soldier, unless you're a dragoon which dismounted to fire normally and reload, um, but if you're a cavalry soldier you usually either have a pistol or a carbine and the carbine is simply, simply a short um, musket or later in, in time a, a short rifle. So it is a short infantryman's uh, long arm basically, so it's not a pistol. Which means that you, you, it is a more powerful than a pistol because it can carry a larger charge, it has a longer barrel so it builds up greater muzzle velocity, um, it's more accurate because it's got a longer barrel and also because it has a stock so you can aim down it more easily than with a pistol. Um, so they are better, generally speaking, better firearms than pistols, um, but they are perhaps more inconvenient to carry, they're a bit heavier, a bit bigger, and they usually hang off a kind of belt arrangement, a baldric type arrangement, and they usually have a bar on the back here, um, and that hooks onto um, that hooks onto the belt arrangement, and they're often worn hanging. Sometimes they're worn in a, kind of a holster on the saddle, in front or behind, but sometimes they're worn hanging from a belt. But either way, when you're on a horse, for the aforementioned reasons, you run the risk of losing the ramrod, so this cap... Um, captive ramrod system you have mounted to the front of the um, carbine, cavalry carbine, is very very useful. So there we go, I'm not going to waffle on for any longer but the captive ramrod system is a really useful thing and was very very popular um, in the 19th century and it was a good way of preventing people from losing their ramrods which was a major problem at the time because it would mean that you couldn't reload your gun. There we go. Uh, thanks for watching. Give us a like and uh, subscribe if you haven't done already. Click those notifications on and I'll see you again really soon for another video, hopefully when it's a bit warmer because it's really cold here in my garage. See you folks.